If you've ever seen an advertisement for a cruise line, resort, or airline trying to sell you on a trip to a tropical destination, then you've likely seen a coral reef. They are iconic symbols of the tropics, evoking a longing for underwater adventures and relaxing beach vacations. But corals and the reefs they build are so much more than aesthetically beautiful marketing tools. They're both a living thing and a habitat for other living things. Not many people understand what corals actually are or why they matter, not only for oceans, but also for humans. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into corals, discussing what they are and why they're vitally important to the health and well being of our planet. If you're enjoying these videos and want to support us to make more, check out our gear at waterlust.com. We make environmentally responsible apparel for ocean lovers that helps fund marine science research and education, including coral printed swimwear made from recycled materials and coral species t-shirts made from organic cotton and printed with algae ink. Your purchase helps keep our small business afloat and allows us to make more videos. Thank you so much for the support. Did you know the United States is home to one of the largest coral reefs in the world? The Florida Reef Tract is over 300 miles long, stretching from Port St. Lucie all the way down to the Dry Tortugas out in the Gulf of Mexico. For reference, the world's largest coral reef, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, is more than 1,000 miles long and can be seen from space. It's pretty mind-blowing to think that structures that massive could be built not by geological forces, but by living things. What kind of creature could accomplish that? What exactly are corals? The answer to that question isn't so simple, because corals are fascinatingly complex. Corals are part animal, part vegetable, and even part mineral. First and foremost, corals are animals. They belong to the phylum Cnidaria, meaning they're related to jellyfish and anemones. All animals in the phylum Cnidaria share the same basic structure. They have radial symmetry. If you draw a line through the center of their body in any direction, it will divide them into equal halves or near mirror images of itself. Humans, in contrast, have bilateral symmetry, hey. meaning our bodies can be split into equal halves along just one plane. The phylum name Cnidaria comes from the specialized, unique structures called nidi that all cnidarians have. In jellyfish, these structures are responsible for the painful stings we've come to fear. If you look closely at a coral, you'll see that it's comprised of lots of individual units called polyps. These polyps resemble tiny anemones, made up of a squishy body with a ring of tentacles and a mouth in the middle. Many polyps are connected together to form a colony, which effectively functions as a single larger animal. Earlier, we said that corals are also part vegetable. And we say this because they're actually hosts for tiny dinoflagellate algae called Symbiodiniaceae. The relationship between corals and the algae they host is typically thought of as a symbiotic relationship, where two different types of organisms live together in a way that benefits both parties. So why would corals engage in this type of relationship? The tropical waters where corals live tend to be beautiful and clear, but this clarity is largely due to a lack of nutrients available there. Hence, the corals living in the tropics need their own way to make food. Like plants, the algae they host go through photosynthesis, using energy from the sun to create sugars. The coral relies on these sugars for food. Imagine having a restaurant built into your body. You never have to go out in search of a meal. How convenient! But a symbiotic relationship means that both parties need to benefit. So what's in it for the algae? When you're a tiny algae cell, it pays to be protected by a larger organism instead of floating freely in the water, where anything could gobble you up. By living within the coral, the algae receive protection from predators and a reliable source of the essential nutrients they need. Teamwork really does make the dream work. But algae can only photosynthesize when the sun is shining. So what do corals do during the other 12 hours of the day when it's dark? At night, corals extend their tentacles into the water column, essentially going fishing for small planktonic organisms. When a potential meal comes into contact with the tentacles, the nidae shoot out their hooks and capture the prey, passing it to the mouth located in the center of each polyp. Once ingested, the food item enters their gastrovascular cavity, where digestion occurs. This unique adaptation to acquire food in two different ways is called mixotrophy. 
Now we know how corals feed, but what do they use all that energy for? Corals that build reefs, called scleractinian or stony corals, use a lot of their energy to construct skeletons. These skeletons are made of limestone. Corals take calcium and carbonate ions from the seawater around them and chemically bond them to form calcium carbonate, aka limestone. In South Florida, fossilized coral skeletons are actually used as a building material, commonly called coral rock. This may be why so many people mistake corals for rocks. But in reality, the limestone skeletons are what remains when a coral dies, like bones in a graveyard. The animals themselves have soft, squishy, slimy bodies, just like the anemones and jellyfish they're related to. Depending on the coral species, these limestone skeletons can form all kinds of shapes, from tree-like structures with trunks and branches, to giant boulders with maze-like surfaces. Some corals, like this elkhorn coral, even resemble trees with their branching skeletal structure, absorbing lots of sunlight and therefore getting ample nutrition from photosynthesis. In addition, these skeletons provide support that keep a coral's gelatinous body in place and provide protection. Predators in the ocean might enjoy a nice, squishy, jelly-like snack, but most would rather not take a bite out of something that feels like a rock. Ouch! Although they grow slowly, some coral colonies can get truly massive. Also, skeletons help corals stay in place in the event of hurricanes, which are common in the tropics where most stony corals live. Unlike humans, who pretty much stop growing after we reach adulthood, corals can continue to grow as long as they live, and colonies can live for hundreds, even thousands of years. Corals can live this long because they keep adding new polyps to the colony over time. The largest, oldest colonies can be made up of thousands and thousands of polyps. Corals literally cement themselves in their environment as not just animals, but as ecosystem engineers. When many corals grow together, they form reefs. Reef structure provides habitat, one of the primary needs of all living things. Even though coral reefs make up less than 1% of all the ocean floor, they support over a quarter of all marine species, making them biodiversity hotspots. In fact, coral reefs are often referred to as the rainforests of the sea because of the sheer number of species that call them home. From pelagic fish like mahi and tuna to small benthic organisms like lobsters and octopuses, countless marine species rely on coral reefs at some point in their lives. But coral reefs do more than provide a nursery for much of our favorite seafood. They also serve as natural infrastructure for one of the most dominant species on the planet, Homo sapiens. Over the past century, we've invested billions of dollars into developing coastal properties. Who doesn't love a view of the ocean? But living near the coast comes with risks. Hurricanes, erosion, and flooding, to name a few. The complex three-dimensional shapes of coral colonies function as underwater seawalls, essentially diffusing wave energy as water passes over them. Some studies have found that a healthy reef can reduce wave energy by more than 90%. Thus, coral reefs help protect coastal properties from water and storm damage, and prevent the shoreline from eroding. This is increasingly important in the face of hurricanes, which are becoming more frequent and intense due to climate change. So, the next time you see an advertisement for a cruise line, resort, or airline selling trips to the tropics, remember that coral reefs are largely responsible for what makes that destination so unique. Tiny animals, called polyps, have gone to incredible lengths to build reefs that marine life and humans both rely on. Corals and the ecosystems they support are stunningly beautiful, immensely diverse, endlessly fascinating, and critically important, making them worthy of our respect and protection.